me win. They don't wanna see me push the button when I'm spinning. They don't wanna see me living while they so offended. I don't understand it. They don't wanna see me spinning. They don't wanna see me written out the penthouse while they rather see me spinning. ¿Qué tal mi gente? Bienvenidos a otro episodio. Si esta es tu primera vez en mi canal, me gustaría invitarte a que te suscribas. En este episodio, mi gente, tengo otro hermano de la costa. Cuando hablo de la costa, ustedes ya saben que es de Bluefields, Nicaragua. Estoy hablando de Prince J.O. aquí. Prince J.O., ¿cómo estás, hermano? Everything all right, mi general. Everything all right, mi general. You already know, you know. That's right. Well, You're taking it easy. We all big up yourself. Big up yourself, Dan. I just wanted to tell you, thank you for giving me the opportunity to to connect with you a little bit. You know, um, for those people who are gonna be watching this interview today, who is Prince Jo? Prince Jo, um, it's just a another youth, you know, from the system from Bluefields, you know, uh, with the Afro descendant Creole background, uh, most definitely. You know the roots, everything. Uh, we dedicate ourselves will be to business, and you know, also uh, in the artist industry. You know, we do. We have already put our name outside in the artist industry, and you know, beside that, a family member and a father. So my first question that I wanted to ask you, Prince Joe, what does being a Creole black man means to you? It means a lot, you know, and from looking at it from our perspective and from my perspective in, in, in this case, you know, being a, um, a Creole black man is a huge responsibility because, you know, knowing that you you need to follow up with what will be your culture, you need to follow up with all, you know, the roots and, and tradition that, you know, your parents from, you know, we are back, the descendants them have left for us. You know, it means a lot that, you know, the image that we're giving out to not only national, internationally, because as you know, um, especially Bluefields, you know, the Caribbean coast side, uh, people look forward to it, you know, as a Creole person because of our tradition that we carry on. You understand me, how, especially with the type of celebration um, that we have coming up, like, for example, in Mayapol. So definitely that is that far part of our, our Creole uh, background and definitely, is, you know, it's just a huge responsibility so that way we could be able to uh, represent that. You know, it's just the proper manner. For me personally, right, growing up, I know what is like growing up in Bluefield. So I wanted to ask you a little bit. What how how would you describe growing up in Bluefield? What you what what you remember your childhood looking like? My childhood, it wasn't it wasn't that dark, to be honest with you. It wasn't that dark. Uh definitely I grew up in a dark neighborhood. Um I grew up in the wall in yo. Know, Big up, big world, you already know. Big up all the people then from Bluefields representing you. You already know it's Prince Joe here. And, you know, on the big up on the cell, big world, by the way. So I go in big world, and, you know, it's a place, it's just crazy because um, knowing the type of uh, background the family them have, you know, the type of living and, you know, the, the way that, you know, you, they grow you up, it, it come on the influence in what will be in in your life then uh for example especially if you not you know take the time to dedicate yourself to get your education to um find that job or seek for other opportunities outside the box definitely you won't be stuck there in the demons because the world in itself influenced you to a whole pile of things and I'm, I'm not saying only bad things you know but definitely influence you um a lot in well be to not striving well be for a brighter future especially for the younger generation and you know growing up in blue fields itself you know is is just a, a crazy thing because you know we have a lot of things going on that you know we you know try to manage between ourselves for example you know try to uh combine and live together more you we need some more unity all them descendants think then that they or or you know elders them have left behind for us you know just been just been going loose it's just mm -hmm. been going loose and you know we're letting it go loose and the unity the unity is just separating between self, and that is what bringing all the violence to the table to the day. But as I mentioned, you know, for me, myself, it wasn't that the dark. It was just, you know, a good experience. Uh, I had a lot of uh, uh, friends. I grew up in a good environment, and I, w I managed to actually, you know, um, do the right thing. And here I am, and representing for my hood. Um, since you're talking about 
the the challenges right and and the separation and that there is no unity what are some things that you think we as bluefish people can do to bring back the unity and the love and also maintain our our culture alive that our ancestor left behind for us well well first of all you know we we, we need to put aside all of this thing what we call envy and hate and and all this fighting and gabbing between each and each and every one another and get together you know because if i just stand here to grudge you or criticize you then i know making no progress because still at the same point you just stand there and you grudging and you criticizing but you're still not doing anything for support to the system you see so you know before first of all everything whosoever want to come and cooperate you know bring unity bring love and, and show that experience so that way the people them who is actually, you know, perceiving this, they can get this good energy, this good vibes, because like back in the days, you know, everybody know me and Paul was coming up or San Geronimo was coming up. Everybody was just, you know, happy and excited to see this, you know, type of events them going on. But now you hear me and Paul or you hear um, San Geronimo. First thing you hear is like, you know, I must stay from a distance. Things might happen because, you know, people has already been an announcing things. So, you know, you the street stock whatever the street stock is that the reality because you know somebody who don't live the street can't just come and tell you um this this rare 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 going on on the street when they really not living it you know yeah. i don't know if you know this my brother but i live the streets um i emotionally i uh, had an emotional breakdown i last in the streets for a minute you know even though i had my music career but thank the good Lord, you know, I'm here, I'm here and I'm still here and I'm still pushing forward. And the reason I'm here pushing forward because I don't want to find part of that bad image anymore, you see. You say that you do music, right? What brought you to wanted to be an artist? You know, you got a lot of factors that play in this, you know, that's uh, that's that's a, a very interesting question. You know, first of all, um, you know, uh, back in the day, I, I, I used to say, a lot, of, a lot of people, you know, just coming out and playing music. My daddy, them would have just sit down and, you know, I think your daddy used to fire part of them that uh, at this at this group, you know, with the Rastafari movement, and they used to have them in, in, in the whole beholding. A lot of people then know and then can relate, uh, relate, you know, and then would just come out and then would just sit down there and then, you know, do Mr. Dude used to always have a guitar with him and he would just sit down and play a two tune. And the way how I see them used to connect between each other with the music, you know, or if them just have a speaker and then they just play a nice music and everybody just vibe to that song there. So, you know, it, it caught my attention. It caught my attention, you know? It caught my attention and then immediately I say, ah, you know what? This is something I would like to do if I could express myself and, and, and you know, say the things them what I really live in and then kind of wear them. Uh, then immediately, you know, we had the Danger Boys group. I said the Danger Boys group, group, group going big, you know. Um, definitely Stotty Shahiri. Stotty Shahiri was one of, you know, the bad artists them there. They always look up to him because, you know, him, him was one of the first ones to actually entice me for, for, for drop a line on the, on, the, on the music, you know, and, and what would be an instrumental beat and so on and so on. I continued doing it by myself. I had a few other... People around me, Reliel Hudson, uh, Swagger, they started with me, you know how they started. We would see a card right there in my front room and a regular thing on one mic with one camera. And then, you know, I remember one day, um, Fire Fire was just busting. And then, you know, Miss Nita stepped up and she said, hey, you know, guys, I think this is on a moment and I want to make a song. And there was it. Um, do you think our people, like you, for example, right, as an artist and other upcoming artists and an artist like myself, a YouTuber, do you think that we get the support that is needed to reach the next level? No, no, man. No, we don't, we don't have support from our people. Our public them still need some more. And start bringing the negativity to the table and, you know, uh, bring some more positive vibes to the table so that we, our upcoming artists, them, our local artists, them can, can shine to the same way. You understand me, how? Because um, from, you know, you jump on Facebook and you post one thing. Yes, we understand. We don't have the equipment, the money too, especially we don't have the economical status for could say, build something right at some point. But there was them, our public, them ready to criticize we on what we do instead of supporting us and giving us what will be um, constructive feedback. You understand me? Huh? We need more our people to come out, the, come out there and give us more constructive feedback. And also the artists them to come out there and 
and do what will be uh, more more righteous music, you know, more positive music, and uh, not bring too much violence into the thing. Speak facts and speak, you know, what you live so you can relate to more people because at the end of the day, you know, only want to connect with the younger generation. You want to connect with the older, the middle, the younger, and the smaller one then. So that way, you know, we can fit in properly. What are some changes that you would like to see, not only for Blue Fees, but the surrounding communities as well, and Nicaragua entirely? I would love to start seeing, you know, that, well, if the government can support, well, be all races and not only focus on one side of Nicaragua, also focus on, well, be the entire thing, you know, to give more development to every city, every community, give more development to every every place in Nicaragua so that way we can make this, you know, like a more beautiful place because um, for, for some reason, I just think that, you know, the ones them who have the privilege, you know, to bring the benefits them to the one them out there who is waiting for get these benefits and which is we, the one them who vote, the one them who vote for the one to put them on presidency or to put them on this or on the rest of things. I just think that they should be more conscious and say, you know what, we're not giving will be the society what they need and bring it out, you know, beside um, putting a whole pile of basketball field and thing out there. I don't know. It should bring some more program, you know, like art program, more studios, more things that people could actually, you know, involve themselves in and make better use of it. Being there in Bluefields as a black man, have you passed any type of experience maybe like racism do you think racism exists right there within blue fields when it come with black and black or black against spaniard or black against mosquito do you think that there's something big there as for right now well racism itself i i wouldn't compare it as that as that much if it come to be black man between black man that's not racism that's here you know that is already here now if you're talking about uh, mosquito and creole uh, mosquito feel like say Creole superior than them too because of the language barrier that them carry. And them know so we get around more more easily and quickly. And beside that, they know that them from will be a community which is a little bit more separated from the society. So every time them come to town you now, things you know feel a little bit more suppressing onto them. They feel they carry a little bit more weight, you know. So they no feel that will be they they don't, they don't have wings. We would say they don't have wings. When it comes to the Spaniards, them and the and the Creole people, of course, there is racism because you know of the simple fact that you know they want to be they want to take over what will be what belongs to the Creole, and the Creole don't want to permit them. So, and it's not like that, you know. I, to me, I think there should be equal rights for each and everyone. For example, if you look in the society or in the government, the majority of you know of the elected them want the elected one them what going to be there. It's going to be you know Spaniards. Because that's who is governing us. So, from my I, from my point of view, I just think say you know the racism is minimum, but there is a lot of envy and a lot of hate and and, and grudgefulness. Do you think the system no want to see basically our black communities strive for some reason? The system itself um, can 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 oppress against us. You know how is we our black people not taking advantage of the tools what is there for us you know how because we could strive for, for a better future we could strive for for for, for greater things but as you know the same thing i mentioned you know like from where i'm from the ideology about the younger generation the ideology of the ideology about you know what they want for be them they not grow up with them type of ambition them that you know they really want to be somebody in the future and so on yeah. That's that's just basically. It. Do you think that that is because of what is being taught to them at home, or you think is because maybe that the the school system is not providing what our people need, so they can look and and the world at a, with a different type of view. You know, me, me I tell you this, you know, me general. My daddy tell me, he say, you know, get educated in school, you know, you get educated in home, in your house, you go to school to enhance what will be the knowledge you already have. So definitely, start from your house. So if you if you see my mom, papa never like study, so no one likes studying either. I get you. I get you. Like, what would be your best message, right, to to the youths them that that is coming up to better themselves? Well, my advice to them is, you know, not not get lost in the system. Um, keep your heads high. Look for see how you could do something different. Change them, have them old bad habits them that we have, and definitely good things will come your way. 
what you think um, is a change that they can make so our people not feel obligated to have to leave the country so we can actually just be home and just make the living that we would want to make? Hmm. Well, my brother, the government would have to invest a couple of millions and that's what they don't want to do. And then, well, the best, the, at some point, the best one, then they, what they must try for though was to put the canal in Nicaragua, I think. I don't remember which side it was exactly when them said they're going to join it and put it for join up with Panama Canal and just so mm -hmm. the shit them can run in and, and, and do the freaking and thing there. Yeah. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. To me, that would have been a, a good economical investment into what would be our country so that we a lot of people would have had opportunity, even those I feel like it would have as well be our economical situation too. And a lot of people poor people would have the opportunity to get more job opportunity. And the next one is to help the fishermen then put back them fabric. Help the fishermen then put back them fabric. Either the one out bluff, the one bluff for them started with back in the days where you used to generate a whole pile of money there and got um the whole Nicaragua spending dollars, that the same one. That is what me think. So they made the two best fit testing for that, for, for our economical situation and careers and start seeing some changes. Do you feel like the United States, right, have any type of influence, not only on Nicaragua, but our people especially? Well, uh, beside, beside the habits them what our Nicaraguan then pick up by, you know, trying to live to other people's expectation, you know, by picking up other people's habits or other people's tradition. I don't think that the United States have any type of influence into Nicaragua because uh, from the very beginning, starting with the government, you know, they don't allow it. And then right down to the end, um, we are Latin and then speak English. So, you know, nothing that they do affect, affect us and it's just that, you know, the bad habits then that we pick up trying to, you know, at some point uh, live to other people's expectations, trying to pretend that we're somebody who is not. Okay, bro. So you had to leave our country to, to find a way to, to, make, to make it out, not only for, for yourself, but you said you are a father too as well, right? So obviously you have to find right. a way for your, for your family, right? What, what right. is the hardest thing about leaving your country? To, to, to sustain your family? First of all, uh, you know, leaving my country to sustain my family, the hardest thing is being far away from them. Then, you know, following to adapting yourself to somebody else's type of food, <laughs> very hard, you know, because once you don't get accustomed to eating, you know, your nice rice and beans and thing, and then you have to come and eat, you know, rice without salt and or, or adapt yourself to only pasta every day, you definitely, you know, you start feeling changes in your body and, um, you know, but at the end of the day, you know your sacrifices and you know the reason why you left in your country for it because maybe the, the money that you're bringing in, it gives you a more economical status within the rank of them. So definitely you fit yourself in just perfect. And, you know, you go back home with a little change in your pocket so that way your family and your friends and whoever you could enjoy and you, you, you to be able to stand up economically there for whatever the situation may be, you know? Yes. So I know you are working on the um the cruise ship, right? And like I said earlier, yeah. the, the only two job most of our people have is either the call center and the cruise ship. What is the hardest thing yeah. about working on a cruise ship? Well, the hardest thing to work on a cruise ship is to adapt yourself to how be a cruise life, you know, because uh the, the rules and regulations them is very strict. So you'd have to be um precautious about everything what you do. Everything you have to be very precautious about and, you know, just follow the procedure them so that we, you know, get caught in action and, you know, because, for example, you, you just can't get out of your bed and walk down in the gang wheel without your safety shoes. You have to get out of your bed, put on your safety shoes along your jacket and thing and walk, you know, with the proper vestment and, you know, all them thing them on you if you were there in a regular house or a regular job, you just get up and you wear what you want. You know, and in this case, it's all the way around. You know, you have to just follow guidelines. How long have you been doing this now? I have been doing this for four years, uh, over four years, uh, working in what will be the um, cruise ship industry. 
as a retail staff. Uh, and basically, well, you know, this is what I have done. I have done the call center industry as well. And, you know, farming and business and administrative ad business and administrating business. I have done that too as well. So, you know, yeah, over four years in the ship life. Why you decide to choose the ship life, right? And leave your family instead of being in the call center in, in our country? What, what, what is the difference and what are the benefits or what are the cons, right? The good and the bad. Mm -hmm. Well, the good side of working home in a call center that you're home, you, 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 then paying what will be the ins for you. You got a, a, a medical slip you could go to the hospital with and, you know, then we'll attend you for free. And, you know, beside that, well, um, you know, you get to see your family every day. Um, but then the money, economically, it doesn't balance. So um, after when you already have your deduction, then plus have to feed yourself at work and feed your family at home, the money doesn't balance. So you always end up doing nothing. So you don't see ahead where even those you could make a monthly living, but you know, you just like if you're not doing nothing because you know, give that step forward. All the way around, if you're working on a cruise ship, I don't think them come with the benefits, you know, for working with the ship. And then uh you, you you don't you don't you know you don't feel it that much. So the money you make is just to support your family. So that, mm -hmm. you know, it's all the way around. Okay, then for those people like myself, right? I have never worked in a call center. I have never worked in Nicaragua. I have never worked on a cruise ship either. How long is one of your contract on a cruise ship? Some, some people make nine months. Some make eight. In my case, I only do six months or five months. Okay, then. I have heard that well on the cruise ship, sometimes like you don't even get a day off. Is that truth as well? It's true. That's a true. Uh, you work seven days of the week, 316 days of the year. Um, that's for some workers. In my case, uh, I have a lot of benefits by being a retail staff because because of tax reasons. Um, whenever this ship dock in the port, you know there is tax involved in it. So uh, we I work in a duty free store. There shouldn't be any taxes once we selling something to somebody because it should be tax and duty free. So we cannot operate. Meanwhile, we import. So them kind of benefit them, you know, benefit me a lot. So if I if I duck in a port from seven in the morning till ten in the night, that's a whole day for me. Uh, eleven o'clock. We, we eleven o'clock in the night is the latest we could work. So the no one we work just for one hour. So the shop is closed the whole day, and just this, just just that same way all the way around. Um, no matter, it just depends on the time that the ship leaves that we just start, you know, the operating hours until 11. And there's but for other people, yeah, but for other people, uh, most definitely people working in the galley, people working in the dining as a waiter, as a bartender, uh, yes, them have to sacrifice themselves a lot because they're working up to 14 hours a day. That's pretty tough, too, bro. Is this something that you would want to recommend for anybody else to do? Like the ship life, as long as you know, attach emotionally to something really special to you, home, I would say yes, you know. But if you have, if you attach emotionally to something back home, I would recommend you to see how you could find a job back home and see how you could suit yourself. But otherwise, um, it doesn't worth it, you know, because uh, you miss out a lot of time with your family. You miss out if you have kids, you miss out a lot of time with your kids, and you know, growing up, once your kids growing up. Uh, without you, it's not the same thing, you know, like, you know, building those experience and those type of moments, you know, with your family. So most likely if you have, if you're attached to something emotionally, it's best you just try for, try for something different. You did say that you work in the call center, right? Um, what are some things that you have experienced in those places and what are some things that you feel like can change so that our people don't have to leave the country like how you did? Well, first of all, uh, lower down and what will be the deduction, they won't have to lower down the percentage and the deductions them that they make for each person, give a good um, subsidized meal, plus raise the pay. Mm. So when you say when you say raise the pay, right, for those who have never worked in a call center like me, what would be like, a, a, do you guys get paid every two weeks, monthly, 
and what is the pay of range that you would make within those time period? Most people get paid every fifteenth and last, so pay would range between five hundred and fifty dollars up to seven hundred dollars. That's for a regular customer service agent. And then once you start, do, you know, you got your sales experience and you know how to do sales, you definitely know so that we're talking about commissions there. And uh, we're looking forward, you know, incentive over $300. So definitely um, you have people making over $1,000 in Nicaragua. That payment that I mentioned, um, it's an overall payment for a month. Mm, so $1,000 a month, basically. What about like the, the, the hours? Does it is it like long hours day as well? Um well based on the institution rule book is just ten hours and a half that a worker should work. So that's what people is doing. And after break and everything it come down like to eight hours and a eight hours and a half. Two fifteen minutes break and then an hour break. Do you feel like um we as black people, right, when we go back there in the Pacific and working in these type of places, do you feel like we get the opportunities as the other people then that is there or that we're treated differently? We definitely, you know, we, we have been treated differently in, in our sense, you know, because of the simple fact, the, 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 the color that we carry in. So from from your black, you know, people look at you differently, um, you know, so they just give you a different attitude, you know, it's not anywhere you go them accept black people you know because of who you is you know sometimes um when you travel abroad especially especially you know in foreign countries you know them see a black man coming them see the angel coming definitely you know them feel intimidated by the simple sense that we black what are some discrimination that you can remember that you have passed not only in our country but also abroad i have encountered all different type of situations uh, for example um neglecting service to you Pe uh, people you know treating you with a different in a different aspect you know them change them uh them porn immediately and you know the way them approach to you is completely different or maybe not even being accepted in a business i have oh. experienced that before now that you're you're working and and enjoying these exp um living these experience what are some of your best best experience that you can share with us on your journey working as a um seaman basically first of all you know being on the cruise to just be able to experience what will be the different type of show them that the um the entertainers them have you know because me myself as an entertainer as a dj as an artist you know be able to see other people perform or the way how them get things done you know it it, it just brides me eye, you know to say you know like i wish that was me there upon that stage or i wish you know so knowing um that i i'm here and be able to prove in in living life on color that you know the way people you know presenting will be them entertainment show could be a, a, a live comedy it could be a dance to be a live band doesn't matter whatever it is um immediately you know it has a huge impact into my life and saying you know like yo this is something you know like this is something you know everybody should be able to experience or this is something that people should st stand up out there and you know even thinking about it like say we should have more of this thing in our country you know like we should have places we could experience these type of things for example we don't we really experience a live band back home so and just the the the, the other simple fact uh traveling like the whole greece traveling over the whole greece over the whole europe knowing Athenas, knowing this, you know, rich history of the goddess, them of the God, knowing this rich history of other places, you know, um, like go to Santorini and, and, and see the reason why, you know, them ride a donkey go up to the, to the place or, you know, I, I would find a thing. I would mm. find a thing, man. Me tell you, man. Yeah, man. And then the way how them pre football in, in Barcelona, you know, wow, it is, it's just crazy, you know, so. It's a lot of things to say. It's a lot of history and a lot of culture to experience. And at the end of the day, you know, it's just to reach in your memories and to reach in what will be your knowledge, uh, uh, you know, this one life that we have and be able to have more and more memories for ourselves to see more, you know, huh? What was that? What was the biggest culture shock for you while being abroad? Like being abroad, you know, a big, big, culture shock to you know, um it's like going to in Jebaltar, going to this 
Um, this is up on a hill where you can see they have them pre some monkey. Them are pre monkey like some monkey. Them are pre them. You know, they protect them like them family. You know how? And then knowing that that was one of the places that uh, them them had a war and the people them used to hide out there. So them take them take me under this under this tunnel. You know, it's a it's a tunnel. You take me under there. The way you know you see things that bullet holes and all these type of things. Them so you know it's just crazy. You know to be able to experience these type of thing then. And, you know, for me, that was a wow back then, was a wow until, I don't know, when I get the chance to see something else that really buys my eye. One of the thing, right, just to almost close this interview, one of the <laughs> first thing that, that you told me as well before we do the interview was, let's do the interview in English because you feel like your Spanish wasn't the best. That's something that you told me, yes. right? All right. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people think because we're Nicaraguans or because we live in the Spanish country, most of us black people feel comfortable speaking the language. Why don't you feel comfortable per se? No, I, I, I comfortable with the language. I feel comfortable with my language, but same way, you know, um for me, Spanish is not my first language. Even though it's stipulated that Spanish is our first language, for me, Spanish is not my first language. For me, I speak Creole. And mm -hmm. I just think that uh, Creole, and since, you know, this thing based on a lot of things that have to do with our background and thing, I think that, you know, people should really sit down and listen to some, like, the real, the real something, you know, like the real way how the things go, you understand me, how? So, okay. but, but I, I'm comfortable with Spanish because, you know, it's not that I don't know, it, it's just that, you know, it's not something that, I will do on a daily basis. Good, good. I just wanted to know me personally why why <laughs> you felt that type of way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyway, bro, I wanted to tell you thanks a lot. Um, I feel like you gave a lot of insight, not only on what happening in our country, but what is what you're also living on a daily basis and some of the things that you would love to see for our country as well and our people to to outgrow. You know what I'm saying in general. Is there anything else that you would like to say for the audience, them out there that are going to be watching this video? Yeah, man. Um, well, first of all, you know, I just want to send a big shout out to the whole Blue Fees, you know, and on a big up on yourself and on know what's a me month coming up. I want to get together and come and make this big celebration, you know, like something and, you know, something unforgettable, you know, like just the way how we started it. Let's go ahead and end it. And let's end this thing with a good vibe, you know, with some positive energy and we could attract some more tourism all way to our country and, and, and you know, put our name outside there. And for the artists, them, well, you don't know, you know, keep on yourself positive, keep striving for greatness and never give up. And you don't know, this is Prince Joe. Prince Joe, where can people follow your journey? How can people see the things them that you do? Where, what, any social media, anything else you like to share so they can keep up with you? Yeah, yeah, for er, um, Facebook, Prince Jail, and uh, YouTube as Prince Jail, and on TikTok as Prince Jail as well. So, you know, just search for Prince Jail, and definitely that's uh, Prince and just a J and a O at the end, okay? So that way we don't get confused. <laughs> All right, then, well, bro, once more again, thank you, and we're just gonna end that right there on that note. Life too fly to be stressing. Stressin'. Don't trouble away and take your blessing. Blessin'. Every day is a new lesson. Blessin'. I'm not perfect, but I am progressing. Always shoot my shot, they step up, then I fade away. Music like the only how to get me through the day.